I mean, I was a little kid, and watching these grainy images, I was completely blown away by the moon landing, and the lunar lander, and the man walking on the moon. And we were all thinking, this country is the best. I built an incredibly detailed model of the Apollo lunar module. When I was finished, it felt like the coolest thing I'd ever done. I built many other model rockets after that, like the, the kind you can launch right in your backyard, but that's a different story for a different day. Today, it is almost impossible to think that it's been 50 years this week since the Apollo 11 landing. 50 years. After all those years, here I am at the launch of another engineering marvel, another one that blows my mind, makes my spine tingle, that makes me proud to be an American, and that makes me want to build things. Appropriately, for a vehicle that's been an American icon since 1953, the new generation represents one giant leap for Corvette. The 2020 Chevrolet Corvette is, true to the vision of creator Zora Arkus Duntoff, a mid-engine supercar. The C8 is everything Zora dreamed of with technology he never could have imagined. For me personally, seeing the Corvette and meeting Zora for the first time all traced back to growing up in this great business. On many weekend afternoons, my dad took me to work with him at the GM Tech Center in Warren, Michigan, specifically the Chevrolet Engineering Building, where the Corvette came to life. I spent many of those rides to Warren hunched in the rear flat area of Corvette Coupes. On the way home, they would take me by the GM Research Building lobby to see the Firebirds in the original Silver Stingray. I just loved everything about it. And they used to have a swap meet in Warren down the road from the GM Tech Center where they'd sell Chevrolet heads and parts and all kinds of stuff. On one of those weekend trips to work when I was about 10, I begged my dad to stop at the swap meet so we could check it out, and he did. We go inside the huge warehouse-like building to look around, and there's Zora. I'd never seen him before, but you could tell right away that he was someone special. He was sitting there holding court, signing all kinds of things for all kinds of people, and it was just so cool, such a great moment. It all contributed to the aura of Corvette for me and reinforced what I already knew I wanted to do with my life. That's why it's so special and so exciting for me to be up here on this stage with this car. This car, the all-new 2020 Corvette, is one that changes everything. With every succeeding generation since 1953, Chevrolet has worked hard to make Corvette better and better. We've never stopped improving, never stopped innovating, and never stopped making the car faster, better handling, more comfortable, more everything. You can make the case that once we got to C7, we had pushed the limits of what we could do in that configuration. It was as close to perfection as front engine rear drive Corvette was going to get. To take performance and driving dynamics to the next level for our customers, we had to move to mid-engine. And that's what Zora had always wanted, of course. In 1959, exactly 60 years ago, Zora and his team went to work on developing Chevrolet Engineering Research Vehicle Number 1, commonly known as Serve one Serve one which made its debut in 1960, was a demonstration of what happens when you push the boundaries of engineering and design to develop a mid-engine race car. What made Serve One so unique was how light and powerful it really was. The car only weighed 1,600 pounds, and the body accounted for 80 pounds of that. The 283 cubic inch V8 power the Serve One produced 350 horsepower and weighed only 350 pounds, thanks to the then novel use of aluminum in the cylinder block and heads and several other critical parts like the water pump and the flywheel. Zora's team also used magnesium in the clutch housing and fuel injection manifold, and it also featured mechanical fuel injection. But my favorite aspect of Serve One, and it's probably yours too, if you've ever seen it run, you can actually see flames coming out of the back of it, and it is just unreal. So Serve One was followed by what I think is most, the most beautiful of all the Serve vehicles, Serve Two, in 1964. 
The Surv 2 was an amazing car, built to compete against the Ford GTs at Le Mans. It had a monocoque chassis, a 377 cubic inch V8 producing 500 horsepower. Importantly, Surv 2 was, in fact, all-wheel drive. The transmission featured a unique configuration in which the rear wheels were driven by one torque converter and the front wheels through another in the front. Zora patented this configuration in 1968. Serve 2 also marked the beginning of the velocity stacks, like the McLarens had, which were developed, in fact, by General Motors R&D, and that car is very, very special, in my opinion. And in 1990, the Serve 3 made its debut. I was already working at the company, so I remember it being built around the time we were spending a lot of time at the GM Proving Ground working on sort of the holy grail of a true active uh, suspension system. Surf 3 did have that yaw control and kept it stable through the active suspension, and it had active aero and other advanced technology on it. Like its predecessor, it had an all-wheel drive mid-engine configuration. And it was powered by a turbocharged ZR1 5.7 V8, producing 650 horsepower. And it weighed only 3,400 pounds thanks to extensive use of carbon fiber, and the central structure was in fact a carbon fiber torque tube that weighed only 38 pounds. The ends of that beam were machined from titanium. Those three serve vehicles and their legacy are very much the inspiration for this new, first ever, mid-engine 2020 Corvette Stingray. They show what Corvette has always been about for Chevrolet and GM, pushing the boundaries of innovation in terms of propulsion, material usage, and performance. Now, just as Corvette has been a halo for Chevrolet and it's the brand, these Surf cars were a halo for GM R&D, pushing the company to greater innovation and to new heights. They also serve to show that mid-engine has always been a part of Corvette's destiny and it's something we've been looking at for a very, very long time. All along, it has been absolutely paramount that we keep Corvette true to its roots of attainable performance. Mid-engine has historically posed a challenge to this mission. Not so anymore. The time has come today, and we feel that both Corvette traditionalists and potential new customers will embrace the change in layout especially once they see it and drive it. They'll think it's flat out the best Corvette they've ever driven, and that will be because it's the best Corvette anybody's driven. There are many reasons for that, even beyond the mid-engine layout, like the way it feels, the way it sounds, the way it looks, and the incredible attention to every detail on the car.